What is the upskies, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the GX WrestleCast. We're on episode 103, and we're on fucking season episode... No. Season 3. Season 3. That's what we're on here, folks. And episode 1 of season 3 of the GX Plus Cast. Welcome. If you're new here, this is the WrestleCast, where once a week I go through all of the major WWE and AEW shows, give you the recap, give you the review, let you know what's going on storyline-wise, review the matches, and at the end of the show, I give out my three stars of the week, awarding my three favorite matches that I witnessed with my eyeballs, and if there's a major pay-per-view, I will do a separate review for that. So, let's kick off the new year with Monday Night Raw in San Diego, better known as a whale's vagina, and they are kicking it off with Becky Lynch, Going up against Nia Jax, a very long beef between these two. We get a good video cap, uh, video package recapping said beef. Nia gets some cheers from her home crowd, but that quickly turns to booze and cheers for Becky Lynch. Nice rolling powerbomb from Lynch. Nia misses a punch, hits the ring post really hard instead. Then misses a cannonball, crashes again hard into the barricade. Lynch locks in the disarmer, but Nia deadlift powerbomb to get out of that. Jax with an avalanche Samoan drop. We got a near fall right there. Lynch throwing wild strikes goes airborne. Nia counters with an uppercut to the face. Nails the annihilator and Nia Jax pins Becky Lynch, grabbing a huge W right here. Wild that it has taken so long for these two to finally have that singles match that has been in the making for like, what, two years now? But it was a good match overall. Nia showing the strength off. Crowd was really hot. Really enjoyed the chemistry between these two. The storyline, it just writes itself. Nia punched her in the face, made Becky Lynch the man. Nia gets fired. Now she's back. And the beef commences. Pretty good. 7 out of 10. Now we have Cody Rhodes. He asked the white hot crowd of San Diego, what do they want to talk about? Cody not impressed with Shinsuke's Christmas rhyme story last week. Um, Shinsuke appears on screen again, tells Cody with a neat animation that he's going to kick his head off. Uh, Honestly, not much added to the rivalry here. So far, this rivalry has been a bit of a dud, honestly. I'm not really feeling the chemistry. I will admit that the little Christmas story that Shinsuke read last week was entertaining, but we'll see where it goes. Kind of a slow brew right here. Now we have Kofi Kingston and Jey Uso going up against Imperium, Kaiser, and Vinci. Sadly, uh, Giovanni suffers uh, injury. Referee has to stop the match uh, legitimately. So Kofi and Jey Uso pick up the W here, but uh, Gio took a Kofi dropkick to the face, and then he landed hard uh, kind of on the top of his head there. Uh, He was able to get up on his own, which is good. He got up, he walked out under his own power, but it does look like he more than likely suffered a concussion here, and the referee just deciding, hey, it's not worth it, we'll just stop the match right here, which is commendable. It, It gives me horrible flashbacks to when... I believe it was Matt Hardy in AEW. He jumped off a ladder and smacked his head on the on the concrete pavement. And they continued that match. It was one of the scariest things to witness. Because everybody knew that Matt Hardy was not on the same planet. But he continued to wrestle like 10 more minutes. It was insane. So kind of relieved that they stopped it. But obviously disappointing. But thankfully, Geo is going to be okay. We move on. It is Miz TV with the Judgment Day. Miz introduces the Judgment Day. But... It's our truth again. He comes out. McDonough and Dom arrive, and Dom gets booed so mercilessly by his own hometown crowd. Just incredible. Dom flips out. He challenges Miz and R Truth to a match, and Truth has no idea what is going on. He's like, Yo, dog, I'm teaming up with JD, and we're going to take out. Like, it. R Truth, oh my God, I say this every week national treasure. This guy's amazing. So now we have R-Truth and The Miz going up against J.D. McDonough and Dom Dom. Truth 
Still confused what team he's on. Dom nails him with a 619. R Truth on the wrong side of the apron. Uh, Dom and JD are yelling at him. Miz hits a skull crushing finale for the W. Oh my God, man. R Truth, an absolute genius comedic performance right here. Uh, ref- uh, wrestlers trying their absolute best to stay in character. I think they did a fantastic job. Thumbs up for all that. Well done. Judgment Day, Dom and Miz stary- uh, staying in character, like I said, was funny. San Diego booing Dom. Uh, may have been the, po- the the loudest boos I have ever heard for Dom, and he gets booed very loudly on a weekly basis, but his hometown booing him like that was just mwah, absolutely beautiful. Very entertaining match right here. We move on. Women's World Championship match. Rhea Ripley defending against Ivy Nile. Got a Rhea electric chair drops Ivy onto the apron. Looks fairly painful. Ivy fights back. Nice avalanche German suplex. Nile, go- Nile goes airborne. Flies right into a Rhea headbutt. How you doing? Knee to the face. A riptide and Ripley pins and retains the championship. Maybe one of the better opponents for Ripley in, in a little bit right here. Uh, I felt a little chemistry in the ring. Ivy solid performance. Uh, good showcase as well. She got a couple good combos in there. And Ripley underestimating her opponent again. Uh, starts out a little shaky, but then she gets in there and just shuts that shit down. Solid retention overall. And they have been teasing throughout this show a former world champion will make an appearance. And that champion is... Nobody can hinder the gender. It is Jinder Mahal, baby. Crowd not very happy. Jinder is disgusted with the United States, sings the United States National Anthem in Punjabi, and calls San Diego dumb. And then, out of nowhere, yes, it's the fucking rock, y'all. He just, out of nowhere, a rise crowd loses their minds. I was in shock. I had no idea this was coming. Rock chirping Jinder, calling him a bunch of naughty words, getting fucking censored like crazy. I think he's calling him an asshole. I'm pretty sure that's what he was saying. Makes the crowd chant day one douchebag a zillion times. Rock sings Christmas jingles to Mahal. And Jinder explodes, attacking Rocky. And of course, the Rock fights back. Nails the people's elbow. Asks the crowd a question. I'm ready. I'm going to go eat. Where should I sit? Should I sit in a booth? Should I sit at the bar? Or should I sit at the head of the table? Finally. The seed has been planted. Roman versus Rocket Mania. Come on, y'all. It's got to happen. It's been three years in the making. Are they finally going to pull that trigger? I mean, with that being said, the head of the table nod. I mean, come on. It's It looks like that's what we're setting up for. Will it or won't it be for the championship? I don't really know. Honestly, I mean... If it is going to be the championship, it's going to make it a little bit predictable that Roman will win. If there's no championship, then at least there's maybe a chance that The Rock wins. But we'll see where that goes. Regardless, um, crazy appearance here from The Rock. Now, I will admit, lately I haven't been huge on The Rock. So I listened to his episode on Joe Rogan Podcast. He was on there, three-hour conversation. And it was boring. It felt pretty disingenuous. I'm not going to lie. Like, everything that they were talking about, like... Rock was just kind of going, yeah, man, yeah, that's great, I love that, I, oh, that's amazing, man, I love it, and I don't know, it just comes off really disingenuous, seeing a couple things popping up online, like, dude talking about Whataburger, and he's never even eaten that Whataburger before, like, I mean, is that shocking to y'all, I mean, look at his body, of course he hasn't eaten fucking Whataburger, come on now, but I will admit the... The, the magic of The Rock for me, personally, is a little bit gone. The the chanting, uh, douchebag stuff is, it's not, I mean, it's a, it's over the top. I, I get it. It's like a crowd moment. Like, if you're there live, you're fucking going nuts. But on TV, it was a little lame. The little jingle that he did, I, I didn't find it all that good. Just, I don't know, The Rock, obviously, when you're not in the fucking fold of the company on a regular basis, you're not going to be giving your best performances. But I guess considering he hadn't shown up in a long time, it was still a really fun moment overall. And, you know, he had the goosebumps. He showed the goosebumps. Oh, it was cool. It was a, it was a moment, for sure. Moving on. Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stocks versus Tegan Knox and Natalia. Nice go around off of the top rope by Tegan. Z360 by Zoe puts away Knox for the victory. Uh, this one here, not a very good match at all. A little bit clunky. It was short as fuck. 
and the crowd used all their electricity on the rock so they were absolutely dead silent uh don't blame them not a very good match thumbs down Moving on, and it was also in a dead spot, man. Right after The Rock and right before the main event, you're not going to get much of a reaction. So, I mean, it was it was doomed from the start. Main event time, World Heavyweight Championship on the line. Seth Rollins defending against Drew McIntyre. This is like a WrestleMania main event, honestly, for me. Let's get into it. Lovely tilt-a-whirl backbreaker by Drew in an avalanche white noise. Seth counters a Claymore into a sit-out powerbomb, nails a pedigree, but Drew kicks out. Damian Priest arrives with his money in the bank briefcase, smashes Rollins with it, but Drew says, nah, nah. Claymore to Priest stops the cash-in attempt, nails Seth with a Claymore pins, but Seth's foot is on the ropes. Seth nails a stomp pins and retains the championship. There we go. That was an awesome main event to kick off the year. Back and forth match. I love the chemistry in the ring with these two. Uh, they they just go at it, man. I really enjoy these two together in the ring. I would hope that they're going to continue on with this. I think it's magic. Uh, the, the fake cash-in, I thought it was pretty decent. Adding in just that little element of, oh shit, what the fuck? And yeah, that's the end of the show. I thought that main event was great. Gonna give that an 8 out of 10. And a good Raw overall to kick off the year. Women's tag team match was the only real stinker of the show other than that. Uh, oh, and obviously Geo Geo getting hurt. That's you know not his fault. It's not really the show's fault. This thing happens. It's a dangerous sport. But that was unfortunate. Opener was good. Our truth was fucking hilarious as usual. San Diego, fucking well done from you guys. White hot crowd for most of the night. Surprise visit from Jinder Mahal and some guy named The Rock. And the main event was great. Multiple titles on the line. I mean, this was borderline pay per view, uh, a pay per view show from WWE. I've seen pay per views worse than this Raw. Seven and a half out of ten for Raw. We'll move to NXT. We got New Year's Evil up up and coming right here. This That's just what they're calling it. NXT Women's Championship on the line. Lyra Valkyria defending against Blair Davenport. Blair a double stomp off of the rope. Lyra just driving her head in the mat. Just looked freaking horrific. Davenport, Avalanche, Falcon, Arrow. Lyra rolls to the outside, saving herself. Davenport misses a knee, smashes it quite hard into the announce table. Valkyria takes advantage, nails a cradle shock to retain the NXT Women's Championship. Couple scary looking bumps for Lyra in this one. Nice selling, nice performance overall. Same for Blair. She was in control for most of this match. I thought she looked in control. That's what I just said. But she looked good. Solid match overall. And then Electra Lopez runs down with her Money in the Bank contract looking thing. Uh, She wants to cash in on Lyra, but Tatum Paxley jumps her from the crowd, stopping the cash in. Man, we got a lot of fake outs this week. Moving on, it is the LWO Wild and Del Toro with Carlito as well versus Gulak and the No Quarter Catch Crew. Nice corkscrew to the outside by Toro, and then an awesome springboard launch by Wild. They just launch him off the ropes, Carlito and uh, the other guy. Dude got insane height on that. I loved it. That was awesome. Thumbs up. Crowd goes crazy for Carlito's hot tag. Backstabber Del Toro nails a Phoenix splash, pins, and wins. I actually, I like LWO in NXT. I feel like that should be their spot. I don't know about Carlito. I mean, he's... Very popular. I would love for him to have a little run in Carlito. The crowd was loving him, so maybe there's a fit there. We'll see. Great high flying from LWO, especially that springboard. Fun trios match overall. And then Carlito spits the apple in Gulak's face because he is not cool. Now we move on. Trick and Mello greeted by Grayson Waller backstage. Mello super confident that Trick Willie will win. Says Trick will put his title opportunity on the line tonight against Grayson Waller, who graciously accepts. He's like, thank you. Thank you so much. Moving on. Ariana Grace going up against Roxanne Perez. Grace slingshots Perez into the ropes. Perez nails a Pop Rocks for the W. Pretty solid match. Ariana getting cheers from the crowd, which is nice. I like her too. 
Perez losing it on Grace after the match puts her in a submission. Referee reverses the decision, giving Ariana the victory. Oh, fuck yeah, Ariana. Let's go. We got Ava Rain, oh god, claims she has a special relationship with the roster and Shawn Michaels, hence why she's been making decisions like a GM for the last few weeks. Wow, okay, so this is just awful. Ava is a brutal choice for this role. She cannot talk. And, I mean, numerous reasons why she can't talk. Her mouth and there's just too much teeth going on she's kind of got like a lisp going on so it's kind of hard to understand her she has no natural like uh confidence when she speaks like it's just it's so clear that she's just you know remembering a script or reading off of something it's just extremely extremely poorly acted or delivered or whatever I, I I mean, Ava's just had an awful start to her career in NXT. She was with the Joe Gacy group, essentially invisible her whole time, and now randomly becoming, like, co-GM makes zero sense to me. I, I don't know what they're doing with her. I don't really know what you can do with her. I haven't really seen anything out of her other than being related to The Rock and being her daughter. That I just don't see anything here, but, yeah, we're dealing with this right now. Not liking it. We got Tiffany Stratton going up against Fallon Henley up next. Loser becomes the servant or the ranch hand. Very interesting. Tiffany with the Bama Slamma to Henley into the apron. Love that move. Fallon, nice corner. Nice counter into a crucifix bomb. Stratton gets angry, grabs a chair. Henley kicks Tiffany in the gut. Nails a running shining wizard. Pins and wins. So Stratton will be Fallon's ranch hand for a day. Really good match right here. I was, wow. Good pace. Henley off to a great start for her singles push, as I was hoping she was going to be. This is the way to kick it off with a big win against a former women's champion. Chemistry was solid. Some nice counters in here. I enjoyed this match. Seven and a half at ten. We have Baron Corbin trying to convince Braun Breaker to team up with him because they're both assholes. His words, not mine. Baron accepts this. This could be a really fun team. Um, But who is going to betray who first? I mean, that's always the dynamic with uh, two heels going after it. But I really like just the idea of these two guys teaming up together. It could be really fun. We'll see where it goes. We have Gigi and Cora. They're arguing about locker spaces again. It's carnage. Everyone in the back is sitting in the wrong place. I mean, the lockers are labeled with your name, and it's so simple, but no one's sitting in the right place. People, it's labeled, y'all. It's not hard. Just sit where you need to sit, and it's just causing carnage in the women's locker room right now. Understandably. All right, Ridge Holland is interviewed now about all the injury mishaps throughout his WWE career. Ridge truly has had rotten luck i mean he feels bad i feel bad for him a little bit i do hope things turn around for him this was a good wholesome segment like there's definitely reality to this he has injured people not on purpose but i i see why they're gonna use this as a storyline you might as well it's built in people like not like know this it's like a thing with ridge so it's pretty good that they're using it as a story we'll see where it goes with ridge like the way that the storyline, they're they're developing it right now. They're kind of turning him into a baby face. But I think he should be a heel, but we'll, we'll see where it goes. Now we have the men's breakout tournament finals match. Oba Femi versus Riley Osborne. Oba smacks down Riley hard onto the apron. Crowd loves it. Nice Uranagi backbreaker from Femi. Osborne builds a comeback. Goes for the shooting star press. Oba has the knees up. Throws Osborne across the ring, nails a pop up power bomb, pins, and Oba Femi wins the NXT men's breakout tournament. Very impressive win for Oba. He dominated this match. Nice power. Uh, he had a good offensive lineup of moves, lots of power. Selling, uh, not the best, I, I will say. Selling wasn't quite there. Osborne, though, he had some good selling, nice performance throughout this tournament. I thought he should be getting a push with a storyline. It looks like they're going to have him maybe in a little love situation uh, with Thea Hale, which should be good. I like this kid. We'll see if uh, 
how he gets into that Chase U dynamic. They're just crumbling right now. So is he going to help bring them back together? Or is he going to be like the final piece that just breaks down Chase U? We'll see where it goes. Pretty interesting though. Solid match overall. I will admit that the tournament was a little bit disappointing. I saw some pretty good looking potential in this tournament. But the matches themselves just... It didn't quite show off what these guys are fully capable of, I thought. Too short for most of the matches, but not bad overall. We have Kiana James and Easy Dane. They say that they are going to be teaming up now. Okay, pretty neat. I like Kiana James a lot. I, I think she's a great singles competitor. Uh, she can go in there and have a good match with just about anybody. She's very versatile that way. So we'll see how she does in the tag team. We have Chase U now backstage prepping for the Dusty Cup. So it's a tag team tournament. JC Jane says she's calling the shots now. Tells Duke he ain't competing in the tournament. Oh, snap. I mean, I think that's only fair. Mr. Chase been fucking up bad. Got Chase U in some major debt. So JC Jane taking over. Calling the shots. It makes sense to me. We have Axiom and Nathan Frazier. They are going to be teaming up for the Dusty Cup. Frazier not learning his lesson from last week. He's talking trash again. This time he gets in trouble with Blade and Anofe. Nathan was pretty damn funny in the segment. I, I liked him right here. And I like the whole Axiom and Nathan teaming up. I like the fact that they're probably going to be fighting Blade and Anofe. I like Blade and Anofe. They don't get a lot of airtime. So yeah, nice segment right here. Now we got Don. Lots of segments in a row right here. Holy shit. Don and Stax introduces Ariana Rizzo officially to the family. She's the female that's kind of been in and around uh, the team a little bit, but we haven't really been introduced to her until this moment. So pretty cool. And then Joe Gacy pops out of the trunk of their car and runs off. So what the fuck was that about? Moving on, main event time. Trick Williams with, nope, Trick Williams versus Grayson Waller for Trick's title shot. Waller, nice stomp counter into the corner, just drives down Trick. That was cool. Grayson rolls right into a Trick Willie uppercut. Avalanche book and Waller has the foot on the ropes. Mello runs down for absolutely no reason, distracting Trick. Waller setting up to finish Trick. Kevin Owens appears out of nowhere, clocks Waller. Trick nails a running knee strike, pins and wins. Thank God. Solid match right here. Mellow running down was just annoying. That was so dumb. The second I saw him, I'm like, are we fucking serious right now? Like, he should have maybe just been out there the whole time. Like, that was just kind of annoying. Very forced. Felt very forced. Kevin Owens was a fun surprise, though. I'd love for him to be back in NXT, man. If they if they aren't ever going to give this guy a world championship run ever again, like, fuck, put him down on NXT. Make him the champion down here. You got to do something with Kevin. Like, goddamn, I love Kevin. And that's the end of the show. Really, oh man, really don't like Ava as this co-GM. It's just the most awful fit ever. It just makes no sense for me. Not really digging Trick always falling so hard for the mellow distractions. They're so minor. Like he just, he didn't even do anything really. He just ran down. He did jump on the apron for no reason, like cheering for him. But Trick gets so absorbed by the distraction. It's a little bit silly. The wrestling was fine overall. Tiffany and Henling had probably the only standout match I felt like this show. Tournament, turn, the NXT breakout tournament ends. It was also just kind of okay overall. I'm happy for Oba Femi. Hope he can make an impact. I don't know how soon it's going to be until we see him back in the ring. Uh, setting up right away now for a t another tournament, tag team tournament. I, I like tournaments. Uh, they're always pretty exciting. They have some pretty good potential. Looking tag teams with Axiom and Frazier, Baron and Breaker teaming up. That could that could be some magic right there. Overall, fine show. Six out of ten. We go now to SmackDown. They're in Canada, Vancouver, British Columbia. Also, well, now that I'm talking about it, they have announced that money in the freaking bank is coming to Toronto, Canada. My wife and I plan to get tickets for that show and are very excited money in the bank is one of my favorites so yeah i, I couldn't have really asked for much more for a pay-per-view to come to toronto other than like SummerSlam or wrestlemania i'm rather happy with money in the bank thank you so we start out smackdown with the united states championship tournament finals match kevin owens versus santos escobar with legato that's what they're calling them now with carrillo and um Garza, they're just it's just uh, the new legato, which hey, they already have a song for it, so fuck it, why not? Makes sense. 
U.S. champion Logan Paul arrives to watch the match. The crowd doesn't like that. Neither do I. LWO arrive, take out Humberto and Garza. KO explodes out of the gate. Nails a very fast frog splash. Got a near fall. Kevin Owens, nice avalanche fisherman buster. And then with a Green Bay plunge, does anybody remember Mr. Kennedy? Kennedy! Nails a pop-up powerbomb, a stunner, and Kevin Owens wins the United States Championship Tournament and will have a match with Logan Paul. Kevin dominating performance, uh, for sure. Santos took a beating. Uh, He had some nice counters, but just didn't look strong in this match at all. Looked very much so outmatched. Solid finals match, I guess, overall. I mean, Kevin looked awesome. Logan Paul trash-talking Kevin now eats a punch right in the mouth. How you doing? Lashley and the Street Profits come out to cut a promo. They are excited to get back to business, but not hurt business. What the fuck? Karrion Cross and Scarlet interrupt, and out appears Paul Ellerick. That only means one thing. Oh my god, it's the Authors of Pain. They're back. Nail a Super Collider powerbomb to the Profits. Cross with an interesting F5-like maneuver on Bobby. And all right, here we go. Finally, something interesting for Karrion Cross. Add some new muscle in with the fucking Gates of Agony. I mean, I always like these guys. I know they're a little green, a little dangerous at times, but they're just a big powerhouse tag team. So great to see these guys back. That's sick. So what a cool little moment right here. WWE Women's Championship on the line. Io Sky with damage control defends against Mi Shin or Mia Yim. Nice knee strike and corner code breaker by Mia. Io misses the moonsault. Yim hits an avalanche styles clash out of nowhere. Like, wow, thumbs up for that. Mia dive to the outside. Io avoids it, and Yim just splats on the ground, man. That looks so brutal. Ouch. Eo multiple meteoras, the over the moon salt pins and retains. Nice effort here for Mia Yim. Must be learning some moves there from AJ Styles. Fucking top rope Styles Clash. Are you serious? Nasty fall there for the floor for her too. So hopefully she's okay. She kind of landed like on her wrist. I'm just hoping like her hand or wrist isn't broken or anything. Some hiccups in there, but uh, mostly a smooth match. EO, great selling throughout. A good match overall. 7 out of 10. Damage Control celebrating backstage. They're eyeing up all the gold. They want the tag team championships. They want Bailey to go in and win the Rumble. But Bianca Belair interjects, says that she will be the one winning the Royal Rumble. Okay, alright. I'm getting pretty fucking excited for the Rumble, baby. We got Paul Heyman. He is asked about The Rock. Heyman says Rock is not invited to the table. Roman will smash and has smashed everybody. Smashity smash smash smash. Classic Heyman hype up promo right here. We have Pretty Deadly, Wilson and Prince going up against Butcher. Or no, not Butch. Just Butch. Just Butch, not Butcher. Butch and his new partner, Tyler Bate. Oh, baby. Good teamwork here from Bate and Butch hitting stereo dives onto Pretty Deadly, taking them out. Big airplane spin from Bate really excites the crowd. Dual Tyler drivers, Butch and Bate, win. Hope that wasn't a one-off right here with Bate and Butch being a team. These two are a natural fit together. They're friends. I first saw these two fighting in that breakout tournament years ago. Fell in love with both of them. Excellent, good teamwork already. They already have, like, some moves, which is awesome. Solid match overall. You know, it'd be nice if pretty deadly. Uh, They're almost like borderline freaking jobbers right now. But, uh, yeah, they're there. Now we have Ashante the Adonis from Hit Row. I forgot he had a job here still, but okay. He is meeting with Nick Aldis. Adonis is hungry for more, so Aldis will feed him with something next week. Uh, cool, I guess, Ashante getting an opportunity. I just didn't know that he was still around. I thought all of Hit Row was gone, but I guess Ashante's still here. So maybe we'll actually see what he can do. I never really got a good look at him in Hit Row. He was honestly like the, th- the third guy in that group. The other two were a little bit more prominent, even though the group as a whole was pretty lame and bad. But anyway, interesting. Main event time. Triple threat. Number one contenders match for Roman Reigns World Championship at the Royal Rumble. AJ Styles versus Randy Orton versus LA Knight. Yeah. Orton slamming Knight and Styles onto the table a whole bunch of times. Then AJ gives Orton a taste of his own medicine. 
Knight reverses an RKO into a BFT, but AJ stops the count just in time. 450 springboard splash by Styles. Busts open LA Knight somehow. He's bleeding. Styles flies into an RKO out of nowhere. Crowd goes nuts. But again, the referee is stopped from counting three. Poor Charles, bro. The, min- the mini Nate having a rough night. Roman Reigns and the Bloodline arrive. They start laying waste to everybody. Nick Aldis looking on, holding on to his composure pretty well. Goes to Heyman, tells him congratulations. Roman now defends against all three men in a fatal four-way at the Royal Rumble. Boom, bitch. Well done, Nick. That was that was an awesome little moment right there. Like, Heyman is panicking and Roman and the, and the bloodline are still beating him up. They have no idea what just went down. I love that. And the match is over, I guess, which kind of sucks. But it was still a good triple threat. Each guy had a good run. AJ, an absolute workhorse out there, just selling, flying over, all over the place. Nice RKO in midair. You got to like that. And the crowd, white hot for LA Knight. Yeah. 7 out of 10. Pretty damn good main event. And a good SmackDown overall. A bit disappointed with the United States Tournament final. Santos just really didn't gain anything at all other than Humberto and Garza. But uh, Kevin Owens looked like an absolute beast. So he better beat the living shit out of Logan Paul and get that championship back. Finally, they have me a little bit interested in carrying Cross, Adding in the returning AOP, which is dope. And a couple of good matches thrown in there. 7 out of 10. And now we go to AEW. We got Dynamite in New Jersey. Oh, my God. New Jersey. All right. New AEW World Champion Samoa Joe has a heartless message for MJF and the AEW locker room. Nobody is taking his title. Okie dokie. Adam Cole, baby, with his group, the Undisputed Kingdom, come out to the ring with a new version of Adam Cole's themes. Pretty decent. Just kind of like slowed down which makes it heal. Adam says he made MJF a lovable superstar and never needed him. Claims MJF is dead and never is coming back. That's a little aggressive. He was very much so alive on Saturday. Undisputed Kingdom are going to claim all the gold. Wardlow appointed to chase the world championship. Ooh, interesting. Jay White comes out with the ass boy seeking revenge on the devil. Undisputed Kingdom outnumber them, so the acclaimed arrive for backup. Undisputed Kingdom escape into the crowd. White and the ass boys decline to scissor with the acclaimed. Just absolutely unreal. Solid start for the Coles new group, Undisputed Kingdom. I'm satisfied with the reasons, I guess, for betraying Max. I, I mean, it's, it, it's fine. It works. Uh, once Cole gets healed up, I'm pretty excited for Jay White versus Adam Cole. That could be some fucking magic right there. Excited for that. We move on now to the international championship match. Orange Cassidy defending against Dante Martin. Guy in the front row dressed like Dusty Rhodes gets some cheers from the crowd. I gotta like that. Dante playing mind games using the orange kicks against orange. Just hilarious. Cassidy plays along for a little bit and then whoops Dante's ass, spikes him with a couple of nice DDTs. Dante with a crazy springboard splash across the ring, near fall right there. Cassidy nails the orange punch, pins and retains. Strong effort here from Dante, just lovely high flying and selling. Loved him doing the orange gimmick to orange, that was awesome. And Cassidy, of course, just another banger. Seven and a half at then. Brother Zay with returning Mark Quinn. It's private party. They are back and fully together. Ready to bring the flavor back to the tag team division. Wicked. Moving on, Swerve interviewed. Calls out Samoa Joe. He's coming for the AEW championship. Let I Yep, thank you. Very, I'll take that. Yep. Maria May versus Queen Eminata up next. May, nice Rana and a mean looking dropkick. Hits May Day, grabs an impressive first W in AEW. Solid match right here. Mariah cuts a promo. She is disappointed. She had to win her first match in New Jersey. Out comes hometown. Deanna Perrazzo, the virtuosa, introduces herself to Mariah. May greets her by calling her a bitch and slaps her in the face. Only fair that Deanna slaps her back, sending Mariah running. 
Tiana Perrazzo, everybody, is all elite. Nice addition for the women's division. I'm very familiar with Deanna Perrazzo. She was in Impact Wrestling for quite some time, multiple-time women's champion. Now, I'm a fan of her. I know she has a little bit of quirk. She's like, I don't want to put it in mean terms, but she's like, you know, someone that I understand, I could see why a WWE wouldn't be, like, the most interested in her. The thing about Deanna is, like, she's not a fucking supermodel. She is beautiful, though. She's a beautiful woman, but she's got some curves to her, which is completely fine. I'm totally fine with that. The only thing that bothers me about Deanna is her promo style. Uh, She's got a very shaky voice. Now, I don't know if she's dealing with, if she has something. I'm I'm just saying this is just what is going on with Deanna. This is something that she's always dealt with. But she can deliver a nice promo. It just always kind of sounds like she's scared. And it just reminds me of this old fucking soap opera that I had to watch. Yes, I had to watch it. I didn't want to watch it. I had to watch it. And this girl just always sounded like she was crying. No matter what the situation was, she could be the happiest. It doesn't matter. Anyway... I like Deanna Perrazzo. She's great. I just, I know there's going to be people that will point out these things about her, but she's really good. She's a good character. I'm really happy to see that uh, they got her to debut in New Jersey, her hometown. That's great. She got a good response, which is also great. I like to see that. Sometimes you'll see people come from Impact or maybe a company that isn't the most well-known and they don't get a really good reception. I was very happy with the reception that... Uh, Perrazzo got and I'm excited to see what she's going to do in AEW the women's division could definitely use a little bit of a shake up they've kind of been using the same women doing kind of the same things over and over again and yeah this could definitely help it out so I'm interested now we have Christian with the Waynes interviewed uh, by Tony Christian tells Nick he loves him praises Mama Wayne and last but not least he must thank himself and not Luchasaurus. So fucking funny. Luchasaurus was like, oh, I can't wait to get all my praise. And then he doesn't thank him. Just, oh my God, what a scumbag. Crowd chanting Luchasaurus. Christian trash talking Edge. And yeah, just another scumbag promo from Christian. Absolutely loving it. And man, they are brewing up for a massive, massive Luchasaurus turn. Whenever that day comes, man, it's going to be huge. Oh baby, thumbs up. Great segment. Now we have Konosuke Takeshka versus Darby Allen. Darby dives into a brutal knee from Takeshka. Just a nasty collision. Like, you can hear the impact. Yikes. Shida rolling German suplexes down the ramp, and Darby's head is just bouncing off of the ground with each impact. Scary stuff. Darby, nice counter off of the top, into a stunner, and then full sprint dive to the outside. Good God, man. Takeshka misses a knee, goes flying over the barricade. Darby, coffin drop to the outside. Takeshka blocks the second coffin drop. Brutal boot to Darby's face. And Takeshka ends it with a power knee for the victory. That was awesome, man. Holy, what a fucking train wreck. Darby is a sucker for punishment. And Takeshka just loves dealing the punishment to Darby. He looks like a kid on Christmas whenever he fights Darby. Just throwing him around and Darby just fucking crashing and bumping his butt off it's crazy brutal bumps and high spots nice near falls classic darby train wreck selling that i just cannot stop watching my wife like sometimes mostly when the wrestling is going on she'll be like in and out of it but when darby's doing this kind of stuff she's glued to it absolutely glued it at the triple crown champion eddie kingston joins commentary upset that upset at Taz for not giving him any gabagool. I mean, you're in New Jersey. You gotta have the gabagool, huh? Triple crown number one contenders fatal four-way match. Trent Beretta versus Brian Keith versus Vikingo versus Brian Cage. Cage delivers a brain buster. Trent landing really hard on the floor. Owie. Nasty landing for Cage taking an avalanche German suplex. Hausen arrives to curse Cage. It appears to work. Cage takes a bunch of super kicks to the face. Trent diving headbutt by Keith. Trent kicks out, drives down Keith, pins, and wins a shot at the Triple Crown Championship. Brian Cage stealing the spotlight. I mean, a pure freakish machine, man. This guy is nuts. I love him. Rough bumps, nice high spots. Seven and a half at the main event time. Swerve Strickland with Prince Nana versus Danny Garcia. 
Finally, the dance-off for the ages takes place. It's Garcia versus Prince Nana. And it was a pretty damn good dance-off. Crowd loved it. Garcia tries to lock in a sharpshooter on the table, but his foot slips and he just eats shit hard off of the table. Just wipes out. Crowd chanting, you fucked up. He did, but eh, it happens. Swerve runs into a stiff knee. Garcia takes a brutal knee strike to the face and an equally brutal top rope stomp to the face. Kicks out of that somehow. Rolls up Swerve for a very wild near fall. That was so close. Swerve kick to the head, drives down Garcia, pins and wins. Feel bad for Danny a little bit right there falling off of the table, but that was so funny. Made me giggle. Really good match. Entertaining start. Turns into a really... Really stiff fight. Garcia kicking out of that that freaking stomp off the top was absolutely insane. Seven and a half out of ten. Hangman Adam Page arrives. Goes right after Swerve. They brawl and get separated by security as the show ends. Well done follow-up show after the pay-per-view fallout. Undisputed Kingdom versus Jay White's group has me pretty damn excited. And a good, solid um, explanation as to why Adam Cole betrayed MJF and was the masked devil. Lots of good wrestling to enjoy. Darby destroying himself was a highlight for me. And, and Christian's promo just maximizing that scumbaggery. And Deanna Perrazzo is all elite. Pretty fucking excited about that as well. 7.5 at 10 for Dynamite in New Jersey. Jersey. And now we are Rampage in New Jersey. We're starting with a trios tag team match. The Hardy Boys and Mark Briscoe versus Kip Sabian, Butcher, and Blade. Nice springboard moonsault from Kip, who keeps trying to avoid fighting Briscoe. Eventually, Briscoe gets his hands on him. Hardy's with the side effect and a swanton. Froggy Bow by Briscoe pins and wins. Solid opener. Nice high flying from Kip. Hardy's fun hot tag, and the finish gets the crowd nice and fired up. Out come private party. They greet the Hardys backstage. They politely part ways, so they're going off on their own. No more Hardy party. Uh, I mean, it, it's fine with me. It's okay. Moving on, Willow Nightingale and Chris Statlander going up against Mimi and Nightcastle. I'm I guessing a couple of local talents. Stokely Hathaway being rude to the local talents introduces Willow and Chris with some fairly interesting descriptive words for Statlander making Willow and Stat and Hathley Hathley Hathaway what the fuck is his name they giggle about it they make themselves laugh and then Hathaway gives zero effort for Willow's intro he's like and then there's Willow oh yeah that was pretty good shit squash match though Hathaway announces Statlander the winner and still no love for Willow Pretty funny right here. Not bad. Entertaining squash match. We move on to Anna J going up against Hikaru Shida. Anna, nice gory bomb. I love her little gory bomb she does. Locks in the Queen Slayer right after, but Shida rolls out. Nails a couple of nice knee strikes. Top rope Meteora and the Shining Samurai pins, and Shida grabs the dub. Biggest test, I would say, here for Anna J to date. Uh, probably... I guess uh, she did pretty good, though, I think, against Sheeta. Kind of a slow start, but a fast-paced back half. Really solid match overall. We have Jay Lethal and Jeff Jarrett backstage, and they're having a falling out. They're arguing with each other, and they part ways. Now, I don't know if they're officially broken up here, but for the love of God, break them up, please. Please. Ring of Honor Peer Championship on the line in the main event. Wheeler Yuta defending against Commander. Commander locks in a early submission, forcing Yuta to use a rope break. Yuta angry and determined to make Commander use up all of his rope breaks, and he succeeds. Nice springboard DDT by Commander. Yuta forces Commander to use that final rope break now. Numerous near falls take place. Commander gets out of the seatbelt. Yuta smashing Commander with those nasty elbow strikes. Locks in a submission, and Commander, no more rope breaks, forced to tap out. And Yuta retains. A little bit of a different pace here for Commander. I thought he did pretty good. He still got his high flying in there, but threw in more technical abilities against Yuta to fit the match type. It was pretty good. And Yuta, you know, nice stiff performance from him. Good technical abilities. Lots of nice counters. Some good near falls in this match as well. 
Seven and a half out of ten, and that's the end of Rampage. It was an okay Rampage. Like, you kind of have the Hardy Boys lately starting off Rampage with their tag team matches. It's been okay. Good crowd pleaser. A uh, little bit of entertaining their situation with Hathaway and Anna or Chris Statlander and Willow Nightingale. Could be something pretty good there. Uh, the main event was pretty solid, but otherwise, just an all right Rampage. I'll give it a six out of ten. And we'll finish it with Collision and Charlotte North Kakalaki. We got the Work Horsemen going up against Darby, Allen, and Sting with Ric Flair. Brawl begins before the bell. Sting hit with a chair. Darby gets teamed up on by the Work Horsemen, gets hit with a nasty backstabber. Sting rallies with a splash. Darby hits a coffin drop to the outside. Scorpion death drop. Pins and wins. Crowd pleasing Sting. Potentially Darby retirement tour here. Like Darby is just beating the shit out of himself on a daily basis. Thank you for that. Entertaining stuff. Moving on. Continental Classic Championship match. Eddie Kingston, the champion, defending against Trent Beretta. Trent with a slap to the face. Eddie responds with a backhand to Trent's face that appears to break his nose. Trent is a bloody mess now. Eddie plants Trent with a DDT, makes the bleeding even worse. Trent battles back, hits a pile driver, running knee. We got a near fall. Eddie goes off, spinning back fist right on the button, but Beretta kicks out. Eddie with the Northern Lights driver puts away Trent to retain. Damn, Trent selling a soul in this match. I think his nose really was broken right there, and that's going to hurt, but uh, well done match overall. Stiff Eddie Kingston classic. So many brutal shots. Eight at the Ring of Honor Tag Team Championships. Undisputed Kingdom, Matt Taven, Mike Bennett, with Roderick Strong defending against Commander and Brian Keith. Commander, busy boy. Nice elbow drop, backbreaker combo by Kingdom. Assisted superplex by Keith and Commander. Uh, a little bit pointless, honestly, but it looked cool. Like, Commander gets on Keith's shoulders, but it's the exact same height as the top rope. So, I don't know. Again, it just looked cool. Just the tip knee strike by Bennett. Cool power bomb into a zigzag combo. Pins and the Undisputed Kingdom retain the Ring of Honor tag titles. Odd pairing a little bit here with Keith and Commander, but... Uh, kind of worked out fine, honestly. Good teamwork from the champions here. Solid tag match overall. We have the acclaimed. Selling Jay White and the Ass Boys that teaming up is the best way to be successful in AEW. It's, it, I mean, he's not wrong about that. So now we're setting up the question, will they or won't they? Will the acclaimed be able to team up with the Bullet Club? I think they're going to do it. I think Bullet Club will agree to do it just for the sake of being able to deal with the Undisputed Kingdom. And then if they do deal with them, then they'll probably turn their backs on the Acclaimed and, and all that situation. But I can see a minor, uh, you know, teaming up here. I can see that happening. Now we have Edge. He cuts a promo responding to Karishjian. Says he works harder doesn't matter if he's got a fight from the back of the line. He sets up an open challenge. Out comes Maria Canellis, Carter, and they appear with Griff Garrison. He reminds us who he is because a lot of us probably forgot who he is. I have not seen Griff Garrison in a long time. He slaps Edge in the face, and it's on, King. It's on. Edge versus Griff Garrison. Here we go. Edge top rope cross body hits an execution into a cross face, and Griff taps out. Edge wins. Griff gets a slight rub here, I guess, from the legendary Edge, who looks absolutely on his game right now. He's adding in, uh, I think that's the first time he's ever won with a crossface submission, so there's that. We have Ric Flair and Sting cutting an 80s-style promo backstage as Darby is just looking on, trying not to laugh. Uh, pretty entertaining, um, didn't really need to happen, but it did, just old guys kind of rambling on, but it was entertaining. We have Kira Hogan versus Sky Blue up next. Blue hits a TKO into the Dragon Sleeper, and that's that. Pretty solid back and forth. Kira, solid start. Blue rolling along. I like the combo into a submission finisher. I love those. Like when CM Punk used to do the Anaconda Vice, he used to kind of do like a rock bottom bookend into the Anaconda Vice. I like those. I like a good slam. Perfectly sets right into the submission. I want to see some more of that. And I got some of that out of Kira. Or no, Sky Blue. Sky Blue. Thank you. 
Moving on, Claudio Castanole versus Andrew Everett. Andrew Everett sounds really familiar. He looks familiar, but I can't quite put my finger on where I've seen him before. Claudio hits him with a big swing. Everett, with a slight response, goes for a shooting star. Claudio wanted to hit him with an uppercut midair, but he just kind of let Everett splat on the mat. I don't know if he just thought, like, oh, I'm probably just going to miss it, so I'll just let him go, or I don't know. Just didn't look quite right. Regardless, Claudio hits a neutralizer, and Claudio wins. An okay match. Main event time, Matthews and Malachi Black versus FTR, Cash Wheeler, and Dax Harwood. And, of course, Dax's daughter is in the crowd. FTR superplex splash combo. Matthews soaring knees crashes into Wheeler, breaking up the pin. House of Black catch Wheeler, knee him in the face, toss him over the announce table. That was pretty nasty. Malachi grabs a chair, taunting Dax's daughter. Dax goes nuts. They hit a shatter machine. Pinfall broken up again. FTR spike pile driver. Malachi on the apron. Good lord almighty, that was dope. Thumbs up for that. Brody King is summoned, but Danny Garcia stops him with a steel chair. Matthews counter is countered by Dax into a roll-up. Grabs the pinfall. FTR win. Uh, Pretty awesome main event right here, uh, using the tried and true FTR formula, but executed very well with the House of Black. Nasty shots, big bumps, wicked tag offense, near falls, it's all in there. House of Black, they're angry with the result of losing. They brutally beat down FTR and Garcia. Right in front of the little girl, of course, you can't leave her without being traumatized. How you doing? And that's the end of the show. Pretty good collision. Two matches before the main event felt, I don't know, rushed and just kind of didn't need to be there, honestly. Maybe they could have combined that into one match, got rid of one, both. I don't know. It just didn't feel right. Uh, The Acclaimed, uh, some good segments here, though, with the Acclaimed kind of teasing, teaming with Bullet Club. I like that idea. I think they should do it. Edge promo was solid. You know, they're adding more to that Christian storyline. It's just the Christian side of the story is just so much more entertaining. Couple of bangers in the ring as well. Good collision overall. Seven at the And we'll go to the three stars of the week. Only one shout out for this week. I'm going to shout out Seth Rollins versus Drew McIntyre for the World Championship on Raw. Probably my two favorite guys going at it right now in the ring. I love the, or at least in WWE, I really like the the chemistry between Drew McIntyre, who is killing it right now in WWE. He's on fire, uh, really good at promos right now. I like his character. And Seth Rollins, the fighting champion, just continues to battle on through injuries and people coming after him all over the place. I really enjoy this rivalry that these two are having. I hope they'll continue on with it. Drew McIntyre's got to be a champion here soon at some point. He is on fire, but good enough for the shout-out this week. And we go into the official three stars of the week. Third star goes to Trent Beretta versus Eddie Kingston, the Continental Classic Championship match on Collision. Just another Eddie Kingston Classic beating the shit out of each other. Trent Beretta, really good performance, man. Super underrated wrestler, like... He's a little bit plain, I understand. Like, he doesn't really have much going on for a gimmick outside of the best friends thing. But he's a fantastic wrestler. Really got his ass kicked in in this one from Eddie. Broken nose, more than likely. Some blood. But it was a hell of a match. Good enough for the third star this week. Second star goes to FTR versus the House of Black on Collision. I've seen a ton of FTR matches, but that formula still continues to be really good, especially when you get a different tag team in that mix, and they work really well in that FTR formula. Just near falls, crazy offense, uh, good stuff, man. Really good stuff from FTR, House of Black especially. Nothing against Buddy Matthews. He's great. I just want, I wanted Brody King in this match more. Like, you take Malachi out too. It doesn't matter. Just I wanted Brody Lee in there. Kind of missed him in this match. First star goes to Darby Allen versus Takeshka on Dynamite. Just a train wreck. And Takeshka is like a boy on Christmas when he gets to fight Darby Allen. Just throwing him all over the place. Just having the time of his life. I love this guy. He just sells his ass off for me. It's like, well, he's not selling. He's legitimately just hurting the fuck out of himself is Darby. But Darby, just the most reckless, crazy seller in the business. The guy just 
recklessly throws himself all over the ring and Takeshka just loves doing it and it was extremely entertaining I love this match and that was my favorite match this week good enough for the first star and that's the show everybody thank you so much for watching listening all that great stuff you're awesome just make sure you're hitting that little review hit that stars or anything that you got to do help out the podcast and all that great stuff you can follow along on twitter where I put up announcements and all that stuff Uh, in terms of what I want to do this week for the GX plus cast I think I'm going to just just fucking get it, get it done, do the Ocarina of Time for the Gamer Cast this week, uh, Hockey Cast, we're going to have one on Wednesday this week, talking about hockey and all that great stuff, Royal Rumble is coming up, so oh buddy, I'm getting super excited about that, and yeah, if you want to watch any of these episodes, I upload them all to YouTube on the Gamer GX videos page, so you can go over there. Watch it, drop a comment, it's a great place to leave a comment or a question about video games, wrestling, hockey, anything about the podcast, drop a question, love to dedicate some time to you guys, the fans, the listeners, answer your questions, I'd I'd love that, so send in some questions, that would be a lot of fun, and yeah, so thank you everybody again for listening, we'll be back again soon with some more GX Pluscast. (laughs) 